everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Jeannie and Cindy. We're glad that you're here. Today, we are going to be talking about breaking bread, which by the way, my friend Jeannie is the one who comes up with these great titles. So let's talk about breaking bread. What's that, you know, what's that you have behind you, by the way? Oh, that's so pretty. So I am in our cottage. Right. Uh, and this is about 120 years old. It's wow. actually a tin pie safe that has all of these little punched out uh, things to aerate the pies. And when you open it up, it's got all these shelves. Isn't and that yeah, isn't that interesting? And, you know, that they would do this type of piece of furniture to keep the flies and to keep the animals and stuff like that and allow the pies to cool down. Isn't and, that something? Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, so ornate, so much energy for nice pies. I, love I wish I could show you. I'm sitting at a little Sheffield table that's wood uh -huh. and, and four chairs. And it's about 150 years old. And it's about uh, maybe three feet by three feet. But it has these wings un underneath. And you can pull them out and it'll seat eight people. Wow. But it's all carved and stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm not a big antique person, but I have... I have possession of a few things that really speak to me. Wow. I wonder how many meals took place. Oh, no kidding. And yeah. conversations and the people and their stories. Oh, wow. And it goes on and on and on. It does. So, you know, we had talked about at one point, and I'm not sure it was on this one, but you and I have had so many conversations over the years. Um <clears throat> that there is a proof, a scientific photographic proof that when you pray over food and bless it, it changes the molecular structure. No kidding. It does. And so what happened was in the like late fifties, early sixties, there was a Russian uh, husband and wife team that were photographers and they were working and their last name was Curly and, and they did a number of types of adjustments and stuff that they could actually find and photograph the life force around bodies and around um, uh, living things like, like plants and food and all sorts of things. And one of the things that they were able to show, Cindy, is that blessed bread, if you bless your bread and they took a picture of it, it sparkled with energy. It Whoa. responded to the gratitude and, and non-blessed bread. I mean, it wasn't poison or anything, but it just didn't sparkle. And it's sort of like we had talked about Masura Emoto and charging the water with our gratitude and all of that. One of the things that the Korean photography did too, is they would take a picture of a leaf and it would show like an aura of energy around it. But if they cut the leaf, cut part of it, the aura of the energy would still be there with a missing part, which leads me to think, do you know some people who lose an arm or a leg exactly. or whatever, and they have phantom pain? Exactly. And they, I can still feel it and it itches or it hurts or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the energy of that limb is still occupying time and space. Well, now we're getting into some deep stuff, but I know exactly where you're going. And I love what you're saying, Jeannie, because we're moving into a time of a new awareness. Yes. We are noticing and we are learning. We know this in our deepest self. If you get quiet, you know it in your deepest self that we are not just this 3D world, that we are not just our five senses. We're our... Women understand the sixth sense better than men, I think, just because. But we have to take care of the babies. So I remember having this big party after Julie and I was a teenager and we were having a party and Julie was a baby in the other room. And I just went, oh, I need to go check on her. And sure enough, she was crying, standing up in her crib crying. And OK, I'll, I'll never forget. That was my first real understanding that she needed me and 
nobody told me that. Mm -mm. Yeah. Right. And so speaking of that, we nurture our babies. You know, we give them breast milk or we give them formula or, mm -hmm. or we feed them, you know, when, uh, because it's such a loving and important part of who we are. It's not just throwing a, a biscuit on a, on a thing and going, well, go for it. No, you know, we feed them. You and they'll do that. I, let me tell everyone you're watching. <laughs> Jeannie. Jeannie doesn't, when you go to her home, she doesn't just feed you and throw something together. She does these elegant presentations. She's very proud of, of nourishing you. She gives you healthy food and it's always got this beautiful presentation. Just thought I'd tell you that, Jeannie. Not every woman's like that, but you certainly are. You certainly are. Wow. I Thank love you. That about you. Thank you. And I received that, Cindy. I really do. Uh, my mother grew up, she was severely burned, uh, third degree burns when she was five years old with a sparkler at uh, actually at this time of year. Oh my God. And so she spent 20 years in and out of hospitals. She grew up in hospitals getting skin grafts. She oh, never oh learned God. how to cook. And she was about this big and about that big. And, you know, she, she could eat like a termite, but she didn't want to cook. And so <laughs> I had to learn how to cook to, you know, survive. <laughs> And which was great. And then, of course, we had the bistro with the winery and all of that. But, you know, I have always been of the opinion, Cindy, that we eat with our eyes first. Mm -hmm. We look at that now. And I, I talked with some people. In fact, you know, the girls that I trained at my winery, because we would put things in these lovely little containers and we would, you know, garnish them and you know, it looked beautiful and people would, we would serve it on these slate hand cut trays and they would go, you know, and take pictures of it and, you know, send it to people and stuff like that. But I told my girls, I said, there's a, there's a science behind this because we could take all this food and throw it in like a little, you know, paper thing that you get with hot dogs. You know what I'm saying? It's just, sure make it just okay. So it contains the food. It would not taste the same. It would not be the same experience. And, you know, truthfully, every time I cook something, I am infusing love in it. Now I have a funny story to tell you. My parents had divorced and my mother then took a job. I went to a private Christian boarding school in Dallas for high school and college. And which sounds fancy, but it was not fancy. I mean, I worked my ass off, but she took a <laughs> job in the kitchen. Well, she, you know, didn't know how to cook. She didn't like it and all of that. Well, there were some uh, uh, teachers that had outside jobs to help supplement. Mm -hmm. And so what the kitchen did is they would make sandwiches. Right. Well, my father had been a master electrician. So she was always in charge of making his lunch as well. They had gotten crossways and all of that. And, you know, she just resented the hell out of it. And she was not a resentful person. So anyhow, when she got tasked with making these sandwiches for these people, one day this little old church lady came in. She had a little black bun and her little, you know, sensible shoes. And she came in and she said, Sister Brocious, I just want to tell you something. I can taste the hate in those sandwiches. Oh. <laughs> And mother just looked at her and she said, what could I say? It was the truth. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, my husband brought that up. I had never heard love, putting love in your cooking. I, and he talked about that when we first got married. And so now I'm with my grandchildren in Florida now all the time. And we make cookies. That's one of our things we like to do. And we are all about blowing kisses in that cookie batter. And they do make them taste better. They do. Yes. They absolutely. Because, you know, we are tied with everything with our intention. You know, we've, we've heard it said, said that energy flows where attention goes. Right. So if you're intending and giving your attention to the love and the kisses and the great experiences, uh, it has to infuse everything with that. Yes. Yeah. 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 I love that. I love that putting love into something. I just, yeah. so, you know, my son-in-law, uh, 
my daughter was telling me that he never really experienced just sitting at a table with family and eating a meal. But you know, that's not unusual. It's not the one from Italy. This is another one. This is, yeah. But you know, that's not unusual these days where people maybe do, you know, fast food where women aren't really like cooking, cooking a meal. They're tired if they work, you know, so fast food, they, you know, everybody's sitting on the couch, eating, watching TV. That's not unusual. In fact, in many cases, that's more the norm. But my husband and I, and Dennis is the one who does this more because I could sit on a couch and do that. No, when it's time to eat and you're the same way, I know. And maybe this is more of a southern, southern thing because he's he's from Kentucky. Kentucky, yeah. yeah. So we he sets the table. We have placemats. We sit there. We turn off any TV. We will put music on, and we have conversations. I was with what a concept. <laughs> I was with my other daughter and her family, and er, we were at a Chinese restaurant. And everybody's doing this, you know, on, in the Chinese restaurant. And I said, hey, I know. Let's play phone. Oh, wait. We already are. Everyone at the table was playing on their phone or texting. Or, and at that point, you know, what's so interesting about texting during a meal or texting or taking a call at a meal, you should not take a call unless it's an emergency. They have a thing on your phone now that says, I'll call you right back. You, know, you can write something like that. I'll call you right back. You don't have to take the phone call. I mean, there are some exceptions, okay, but, but really leave it down and don't start texting people during that 20 minutes that you have with people that you love, that you can converse with, that you can be caring. How was your day? How are things going? That type of thing with the meal it really does make a difference my mother and dad are the same way by the way now that i'm thinking about it and they're california so mom lays out a tablecloth for every meal they they eat and they sit together and they eat and if i'm talking on the phone with them and all and mom's got things ready dad says well your mother's got dinner on the table it's time to hang up People don't do that. No, you. I do that with my husband. Right. <clears throat> you know, he'll call right. or something and I'll say, Joe's going to be home in 10 minutes. Oh, no. mm -hmm. or he's getting off work. I'm going to hang up now because I'm going to fix his cocktail. We're going to sit out on the patio and we're going to talk. Right. right. And it makes a huge difference. I did see something one time where this guy had had his friends and they were all out to eat. And he said, everyone, give me your phone. Give me your phone. So they were... Okay, so he makes, a, he makes a pile of phones and he said, the first person who picks up this phone during the meal has to pay for everybody. Oh, I was cool. like, well, that's a great idea. Wow. And so like nobody is going next to the phone. You know? No, because it's rude. It is. It it's is. rude. When you're sitting with people, you should give your attention to the people at the table. Everyone else can wait. And not only that, but I have learned from my parents, from you and from my husband, that I respect that. Mm -hmm. I think, wow, that's called respect, just plain old respect. The, even, in fact, I was in California and I heard this on the radio. No kidding. Uh, somebody was saying, that there have been studies made that families that sit at a dinner table every night have, as a rule, have much less trouble with their teenagers or their children getting in trouble. That right. is in the, that's a statistic with right. that because there's communication, there's love, there's advice, there's caring, there's, Sometimes things are revealed that eh. <laughs> I remember that happened at our dinner table a few times. I also remember that if you were impolite, uh, well, Dennis tells a great story about this. 
where they were sitting down to eat a meal and Dennis popped off at his mother. He was a teenager at the time and his dad took his plate and broke it and said, son, you don't eat here anymore. Oh, that got his attention. There got to be consequences. <laughs> uh, well, remember, reminds me, you know, when we, we had six children, I was the second oldest, then we had our parents, mm -hmm. but they always were inviting people over. I mean, it was not unusual for us to have 10, 12 people right. and all this conversations going on. And I mean, I couldn't get, you know, we had to ask for, you know, would you please pass the potatoes mm -hmm. or whatever. And so, I mean, I don't know how old I was. I wasn't very old. But I just got up and I just walked around to go get the potatoes thinking I won't, you know, and my father just like ripped my head off verbally. Yeah. And he said, what are you doing? I was like, I'm just getting the potatoes. He said, do you think you're at a cafeteria? Well, I didn't even know what a cafeteria was because we never went out to eat, you know, but that's stuck in my head. It's like, no, no, you don't do that. Wow. Yeah. Right. And you always ask to please pass and you give people an opportunity to give. And that's something that we should do a show on sometime. So how many times do people say, oh, no, that's OK. No, that's OK. When somebody offers me something, I don't care what it is. And I know that it's a genuine or I've, I mean, have have you ever had somebody give you something and or you go to give somebody something? And they say, I already have one of those. It's like, really? Yeah, yeah. No, you well, take give it to it. someone else. Exactly. Yeah. Pass it on. But it's about having that opportunity to give. Pass the potatoes here. Thank you. Giving and and keeping that cycle of love, of giving and receiving, that all happens at a dinner table. So, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you one other little tip as we start to wrap this up. Right. Is I learned early on if somebody said, you know, please pass the salt and pepper, you pass the salt and pepper, you don't use it first. Oh, okay. It was in front of you. If you wanted to use it, you use it. But you just you don't do it if somebody has asked you. You immediately pass it to them. Isn't that something? And I've got, and I've got a story in closing as well. On that <laughs> note, Conrad Hilton would, when he would <laughs> interview people to be a manager of one of his hotels, he would take them to dinner and watch if they salt and peppered their food before tasting it. They didn't get the job. If they tasted it and then put salt and pepper on. And so what was the underlying message here? The underlying message there is investigate before you react. Don't assume that Don't it's assume. already going to need help and need because help. Need what help. does assume mean? It makes uh, an ass of you and me. Ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? We should go out to dinner. Oh, you're in Florida now. You're not in. You're not in Texas. We can zoom. Not long now. Not long now for our being out in September. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Give us some feedback, please. Yeah. You know, you can reply to this and let us know how you're enjoying this or what ideas this has sparked for you. Because exactly. Looking forward to seeing you in September. Okay. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye, Cindy. Adios.